Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Sudisha Kumar. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my presentation. This is my design proposal for Building 12, which is a historical building located in Pier 70, San Francisco. In its context, this proposal of Building 12 heavily takes into account different environmental, social, and historical challenges in San Francisco and the Bay Area in order to create a design that is most appropriate and relevant for the Pier 70 site. This proposal is divided into first four parts. First, we'll go over the site location and the history of Building 12. Next, we'll look at a brief overview of San Francisco's current issues, and then go on to look at my project vision for Building 12, along with three plan diagrams of the interior structure of that building. Finally, we'll look at how these diagrams inform San Francisco's current social issues, as discussed in part two. So first, let's go over Building 12 site location and history. So before the gold rush, Pier 70 was already an industrial site. Building 12 was originally constructed in 1941 and used by Bethlehem Steel for shipbuilding in World War II. During the two world wars, as the shipbuilding industry had gained massive popularity, Building 12 was considered to be one of the most efficient shipyards in the Pier 70 area known for its operations. And then after World War II, Building 12 continued to be used for the construction of ships and was notably used to build Bay Area Rapid tra Transit Tunnels, or otherwise known as BART Tunnels, that crossed under the San Francisco Bay. The shipbuilding industry later downsized as a result of the end of World War II and Building 12 had essentially remained abandoned, with the exception of its occasional use for event spaces. Recently, this abandoned state of Building 12 has left multiple organizations such as Brookfield Properties and Perkins and Will, who are mostly in charge of the designs, as well as JLL and CBRE to brainstorm how to repurpose this building. These new interpretations primarily include Building 12 as an office or a creative maker space, focusing on how to make a space for the community, as well as redefine the Pier 70 area that will pay homage to its historical shipbuilding roots. But some of these interpretations don't take into account the consideration of contextualization issues in San Francisco and the Bay Area. So let's go over some of San Francisco's current social and environmental issues. According to Plan Bay Area 2040, in recent years, the Bay Area has witnessed significant budget cuts in the funding for affordable housing programs. Unaffordable housing has specifically been concentrated in three counties, San Mateo, Santa Clara, but most importantly, San Francisco, all of which pose risks to the Bay Area's socioeconomic di diversity and economy. San Francisco has specifically been a major outlier in housing approvals. According to researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, they noted that San Francisco's local zoning and planning requirements create hurdles that require more than two years to jump over due to their notoriously complex processes. I am very well aware that the issue of affordable housing in the Bay Area is incredibly multifaceted, rooted from countless other social issues that exist in the Bay Area and beyond. But the process of housing approvals in the San Francisco County is one of the most significant causes for the displacement of low and moderate income households, whether they were single or multifamily units as shown in the diagram, by showing a downward trend in the number of permitted housing units that displaced these family units and left them essentially homeless. With the demand of housing, there are also increased development pressures on open space. According to a Sustainable Agricultural Education Report in 2011, or otherwise known as SAGE, as development pressures have reached traditional agricultural communities, there are more opportunities for large urban corporations to buy lands for specifically urban use, causing the cost of agricultural land in the Bay Area to skyrocket. Bay Area farmers and ranchers experience the most conflict with these businesses and are forced to overcome these competitive disadvantages in order to keep their land. This report also speculated that this could address a new issue of food sustainability and sourcing as less agricultural space makes it more difficult to supply healthy food to urban regions, residents, and visitors. Additionally, allowing other carbon positive urban corporations to consume this open land worsens air pollution and leaves less room for natural ecosystems and inhabitants to thrive. The demand of housing 
also has its effects on transportation goals. Many individuals in San Francisco with lower paying jobs face overcrowded and unhealthy housing, so they are prompted to move farther away from their jobs. And this overwhelming connect disconnect between where people live and work, as stated by the Plan A Bay Area 2040 report, makes transportation more difficult, which results in record levels of freeway congestion, higher transportation costs, and more pollution from passenger vehicles. In response to some of these complex social and environmental issues, my vision for Building 12 is a sustainable homeless shelter that preserves the skeleton of the original historical building as a way to promote sustainable building practices, but also whose program or usage can be used to potentially reduce the displacement of low and moderate income households and offer a solution to those social issues in the Bay Area. I currently have three plan diagrams of the interior structure of Building 12, referenced in Google Earth in order to analyze the most current state the building is in right now and building off of the interior structures that are already existing. So this is my plan diagram of the first floor. The open space and services floor features one general office, one counselor or therapist office, and one nurse's office. And given Building 12's large space and natural lighting, the first floor also features an open room for a lounge, as well as an additional unisex bedroom or bathroom unit. And the diagram is also to scale. One centimeter is equivalent to around 15 feet in real life. This is a plan diagram of the second floor, which is which is a part of the main interior structure and features the main bedroom and bathroom unit. Communal bathrooms are on the left and right wings of the second floor, while bedrooms are adjacent to the bathrooms and primarily concentrated in the middle. Finally, the plan diagram for the third floor features an open recreational face, space and dynamic and flexible furniture. Activities such as arts and crafts, games, reading, etc., all can also take place on the third floor. And another communal bathroom is available on the left wing, while the right wing features one job training or volunteer office for residents. Now, after looking at those diagrams, how does this vision respond to Bay Area social issues as well as other issues regarding homeless shelters? Let's look at a few homeless shelter concerns. According to Bright in the Corner, a local nonprofit organization based in the Bay Area dedicated to serving the homeless, they interviewed several residents and found that many feel reluctant to enter a homeless shelter because it fails to connect them to lo local job opportunities or gain financial stability. This is why many individuals when leaving the shelter are stuck in the same situation as they were before. Additionally, they also state that individuals tend to form supportive relationships with one another and may not want to risk that support system when entering the shelter. Finally, according to a 2021 report by the American Civil Liberties Union Foundation in SoCal, the number of Orange County fire authority calls for emergency medical services at the Courtyard Emergency Shelter averaged around 78 calls per month. The high number of medical emergencies at the Courtyard Shelter reflects the extreme physical and mental vulnerability of some of the homeless shelter population. So let's look at a solution. Pier 70 has supported several manufacturing jobs for centuries. The third floor will contain a job or housing assistance office, which will be able to connect the shelter's residents to local manufacturing jobs, as well as even housing opportunities that will enable them to gain financial stability. Additionally, Building 12 will contain many opportunities for socializing and residents will be able to connect with one another in the open lounge space on the first row or perform recreational activities on the third floor of the center section. Now let's look at some environmental concerns. According to the San Francisco Benchmarking Report, in 2014, just over half of greenhouse gas emissions had came from energy used in the city's residential and commercial buildings. These buildings often consume large amounts of energy for lighting, heating, cooling, and other operations. Additionally, according to the Constructor, Re Constructor Report of 2024, the construction industry results in airborne particles that have a size range of less than 10 micrometers in diameter, and such seemingly invisible particles can cause harm to humans and environmental health. 
So in an attempt to minimize non-renewable energy consumption, the shelter will utilize renewable forms of energy such as solar power, but also with the advantage of being located near a wa waterfront, perhaps also hydroelectric power in order to reduce the use of fossil fuels and lower the emission of greenhouse gases. But given hydroelectric's power, hydroelectric power's negative impact on aquatic habitats as it requires the construction of dams underwater, it may not be the most reliable source of energy. Additionally, LED lights, which last longer and use up to 90% less energy than most lights, according to energy.gov, will be used to contribute to the building's interior ambiance. Finally, Building 12 plans to combine the need for adequate air quality and socializing or mental health by implementing gardening as a recreational activity. Residents can spend time developing greenery around the shelter as a form of stress reduction. Absorbing level, levels of carbon emitted by Building 12 or other buildings in the Pier 70 area. Specifically, using native plants are known to be most effective for absorbing carbon and often require less water. In addition to achieving sustainability through renewable energy and greenery, with its, with its rich historical background, Building 12 also plans to incorporate adaptive reuse. Building 12 will continue to maintain its industrial aesthetic, primarily its structural floor, windows, paneling, and roof decking, which according to a report by Brookfield Properties, account for 75 to 80% of a building's embodied carbon footprint. According to their design proposal, and similarly to my proposal, Brookfield Properties' current interpretation of Building 12 invo involves continuing to perform this as an industrial retro chic aesthetic, as a form of adaptive reuse that conserves resources and preserves the historical roots of Pier 70. By incorporating adaptive reuse, Building 12 becomes a link to San Francisco's history, allowing it to maintain its distinct urban identity but by also taking into account social context and the policy issues surrounding the Bay Area, the community can feel like a part of both San Francisco's rich shipbuilding history, but also sustainably social and socially inclusive future. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can ask in the webinar. Wonderful job, Sudisha. Um, what was the most inspiring part of, you know, putting together this building plan and floor plan for you? I think for me, the most inspiring part was looking at how it wasn't just building 12, but also other buildings in the Pier 70 area that were using adaptive reuse. Uh, when I was talking about this to my mentor, uh, he did mention that, um, like some studio or art spaces were modeled off of previous factories. And that kind of gave me an idea for this project and how sustainability can be used in the form of adaptive reuse in order to um, maybe reuse a building and program it in a way that resolves social issues. So I think that was one of the most motivating aspects for me for this project. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your beautiful presentation and your work.